Hi. In the last session, we defined the association between the automorphism group and the feedless tension in the following way. Given a subfield f of k, the associated group is the collection of automorphisms of k which fits as f. That means if k or f is a feedless tension, then the associated group is the collection of automorphisms of k which fits as f. On the other hand, if you have a group of automorphisms of k, the associated extension k or f is defined by taking f to be the fixed field of the automorphisms. So, in this session, we first find the size of the automorphism group or order of the automorphism group in case of the splitting fields of a polynomial and we define what a Galois group is. So we first show the following theorem. The theorem states the following. So let fx be a polynomial in fx where f is a field and E is the splitting field of fx or f. Then the order of the automorphism group of E or f is less than or equal to the degree of the extension E or f. And the equality hold, that means the order of the automorphism group E or f is equal to the degree of extension E or f if fx is a separable polynomial or f. Now E is a splitting field of fx means what? Means fx split completely or e. That means fx can be written as the product of linear factors in E. And E is the smallest field containing F satisfying this property. And Fx is separable means what? Means Fx has no multiple roots. That means all roots of Fx are simple roots. That means all roots of Fx are distant. So let us see the proof of this. So we have seen in the proof of uniqueness of splitting field that if you have a field isomorphism between f and f dash and fx is a polynomial in fx and f dash of x is the image of fx under phi which is in f dash of x, E is the splitting field of f of x, E dash is the splitting field of f dash of x, then the isomorphism phi from f to f dash can be extended to an isomorphism of isomorphism sigma from e to e dash. That means that we have this diagram that says that if f is a map isomorphism between f and f dash, then you can extend this phi to an isomorphism e to e dash given by sigma. That means that sigma restricted to f is equal to phi or sigma is the extension of phi. Now we first show that the number of extensions from phi to sigma is less than or equal to the degree of the extension e over f. And the equality hold that means the number of extension from phi to sigma is equal to degree of extension e over f if fx is a separable polynomial over f. So we prove this by induction on the degree of extension e over f. So what will happen when e, degree of extension e over f is equal to 1? When the degree of extension e over f is equal to 1 means what e is equal to f. So definitely then e dash is equal to f dash and sigma is equal to phi. So therefore the number of extensions from phi to sigma is 1. And that 1 is same as the degree of extension e over f. Therefore the result is 2 when the degree of extension e over f is equal to 1. So we assume the result is 2 for any extension k over uh, uh, l with degree of k or l or the degree of extension k or l is less than or equal to less than 
the degree of extension u of f and assume that degree of extension u of f is greater than 1 because e is the splitting field of f of x f x e and if f x split completely over f then e is equal to 1 therefore e the degree of extension u of f is equal to 1 but here it is given that the degree of extension u of f is greater than 1 therefore f x has at least one irreducible factor p of x which is of degree greater than 1 so let p dash of x is equal to phi of p of x that means the corresponding irreducible factor of f dash of x is p dash of x where p dash of x is equal to phi of p of x let alpha be a fixed root of p of x so this means that now onwards we are not going to change alpha and once we have taken it alpha is a root of p of x and alpha is fixed for the rest of the proof let sigma be an extension of phi to e that means that sigma is an isomorphism between e and e dash and sigma restricted to f is equal to phi since alpha is in e and f is contained in e f of alpha is a subfield of e containing f so we can restrict sigma to f of alpha then that is a map or that is an isomorphism between f of alpha and some subfield of e dash and suppose we call to, uh, sigma restricted to f of alpha as tau then tau is a map from f of alpha to some subfield of e dash and that one is an isomorphism now what will be the subfield of e dash because we know that tau is an isomorphism tau is completely determined by its image of alpha that is tau of alpha suppose we assume that a tau of alpha is equal to beta then tau from f of alpha to f dash of beta is an isomorphism so also as alpha is a root of p of x we get beta is also a root of p dash of x that means we have shown here that if tau is a isomorphism between f of alpha and f dash of beta with tau of alpha is equal to beta then this beta is a root of p dash of x then we have the diagram therefore this diagram that is suppose f to f dash is an isomorphism given by phi and f alpha to f dash of beta given by tau and e to e dash is given by sigma then tau is an extension of phi and sigma is an extension of tau that means that is tau sigma restricted to f alpha is tau and tau restricted to f is equal to phi on the other hand if beta is any root of p of x then you can consider a, a map tau from f alpha to f dash of beta where which is defined by or determined by tau of alpha is equal to beta and this is definitely an isomorphism and clearly an extension of phi from f to f dash because here what does tau takes tau takes f to f dash and tau takes alpha to beta so in this case also we get an the same diagram as before that means for any root of p dash of x we can get a map tau from f alpha to f dash of beta and that is an isomorphism and that is an extension of phi and we get the same diagram as before so thus we proved that if tau is any isomorphism between f of alpha and f dash of beta then beta is a root of p dash of x and if beta is a root of p dash of x tau from f alpha to f dash of beta is an isomorphism and is an extension of f to f extension of phi which is an isomorphism between f and f dash and we have this diagram so this means that the number of extensions from phi to sigma is equal to number of these diagrams 
but the number of extensions of phi to to by the above argument which is same as the number of distant roots of p dash of s because each to is depending on the root beta of p dash of s therefore the number of extension of phi to to is equal to number of distant root of p dash of s but the number of distant root of uh, roots of p dash of s is always less than or equal to degree of p dash of s and the equality holds here that means the number of distant roots of p dash of s equal to degree of p dash of s if all roots of p of p dash of s are distant that means that in that case p dash of s will be separable therefore in this case the number of extensions of phi to to is same as the number of distant roots of p dash of s and which is less than or equal to degree of p dash of s and note that the degree of p dash of s is equal to degree of p of s and which is same as degree of extension f alpha over f because p of s is the irreducible for polynomial for which alpha is a root and so p of s is a minimal polynomial of alpha therefore the degree of extension f alpha over f is same as degree of p of s so therefore the number of extensions of phi to to is less than or equal to degree of extension f alpha over f and as i said earlier so this equality holds if p h all the roots of p of s are distant or p of s is separable now because e is the splitting field of f h over f then e is also the splitting field of f h over f alpha because we can treat f h as a polynomial over f alpha and e will contains all the roots of f of h or f of h split completely over e so we, e is also a splitting field of f h over f alpha similarly e dash is the splitting field of f dash of h or f dash of beta then the degree of the extension e or f alpha is definitely less than degree of the extension e or f why because if they are same that means degree of extension e or f alpha is equal to degree of extension e or f then f alpha will be same as f and then alpha belongs to f and but alpha is a root of the irreducible polynomial p of h over f therefore alpha cannot be belongs to f so which is not possible therefore the degree of extension e over f alpha is strictly less than the degree of e over f so we can apply the induction assumption to this degree of extension e over f alpha so therefore by induction assumption the number of extensions from to to sigma that means to is a map from f alpha to f of beta to sigma e to e dash is always less than or equal to the degree of extension e or f alpha and the degree the equality holds if f h has distant roots that means f h is separable therefore the number of extensions of phi to sigma is less than or e equal to the number of extensions of phi to to into the number of extensions of to to sigma but the number of extensions of phi to to is less than or equal to the degree of extension e or f alpha and the number of extensions of to to sigma is less than or equal to f alpha degree of extension of f alpha or f therefore the number of extensions of phi to sigma is less than or equal to the degree of extension e or f alpha into the degree of extension f alpha or f but by the multiplicative property which is same as the degree of extension e or f that means the number of extensions of phi to sigma is less than or equal to the degree of extension e or f and the equality holds if p of h is separable and f of h is separable but we know that p of h is an irreducible part factor of f of h so if f of h is separable then p of h is also separable therefore 
the equality holds. That means the number of extensions of phi to sigma is equal to the degree of extension e over f if f of x is separable. That means f of x has the distant roots. So we prove that if e is the uh, the, uh, we prove that the number of extensions of phi to sigma is always less than or equal to the degree of extension e over f. So if we take f is equal to f dash and phi is equal to the identity map, then f of x is equal to f dash of x, then the splitting fields are also same and therefore e is equal to e dash. Therefore, the isomorphism sigma from e to e dash is become an automorphism of e. And because it is an extension of phi from f to f dash and phi f to f, which is identity map, therefore sigma restricted to f is equal to identity. So that means that sigma is an automorphism of E and sigma fixes elements of f. That means sigma is an automorphism of E fixing f. That means sigma belongs to automorphism of E or f. That means the number of extensions of phi to sigma where phi is equal to identity map and sigma is, uh, is the automorphism of E, then that automorphism is in, uh, uh, that sigma belongs to automorphism E or F and this number will be same as the cardinality or the order of the group automorphism of E or F. That means the number of automorphisms sigma of E fixing F is the order of the automorphism group automo out of E or F. And by above argument, this order is less than or equal to the degree of E over F. So we have proved that if E is a splitting field of a polynomial Fh or F, then the order of the automorphism group E or F is less than or equal to the degree of extension E or F. That's the proof. So, and the equality holds if Fh is a separable polynomial. So now we are in a state to define what a Galois extension and what is a Galois group. So let K or F be a finite extension. Then K is said to be a Galois or F and K or F is a Galois extension if the order of the automorphism group of K or F is equal to degree of the extension K or F. Now if K or F is Galois, then the group of automorphisms out of K or F is called the Galois group of K or F and is denoted by G of K or F. That means the automorphism of the Galois extension we call it as a Galois group and K or F is a Galois extension if the order of the automorphism group of K or F is equal to degree of extension K or F. So therefore by above theorem so the corollary is if K is a splitting field over F of a separable polynomial Fh then K or F is Galois because if K is a splitting field of a separable polynomial Fh over F then we have seen that the order of the automorphism group of K over F is equal to the order, uh, the degree of the extension K over F. So therefore, by definition, K over F is a Galois extension. And suppose Fh is given and which is given as separable polynomial, then what will be the Galois group of the polynomial? So if Fh is a separable polynomial or F, then the Galois group of Fh or F is the Galois group of the splitting field of Fh over F. That means that Galois group of K over F where K is the splitting field of Fh where Fh is a separable polynomial. So that is for the day. So in the next session we discuss about some examples of Galois extension and Galois group. Thank you.